When was photography established as an art form? In the early 1900s. Alfred Stieglitz, 1864-1946, is the acknowledged father of modern photography. His interest in the medium began when he was just a toddler, at the age of two. He became obsessed with a photo of his cousin, carrying it with him at all times. When he was nine years old, he took exception to a professional photographer's practice of using pigment to color a black and white photo, complaining that this spoiled the quality of the print. Between 1887 and 1911 Stieglitz worked to establish photography as a valid form of artistic expression. A pursuit for which he was sometimes publicly derided. He believed that photography should be separate from painting, but on an equal footing as an art form. He also strove to differentiate photography by instilling it with an American essence. The streets of New York City became his subject. By the time Stieglitz founded the Photo Secession Group in 1902, he had developed a uniquely American art form. Stieglitz also published and edited photography magazines, most notably Camera Work, 1903-17. After an unhappy first marriage, in 1924, Stieglitz married American artist Georgia O'Keeffe. 1887-1986 who became the subject of one of his best-known series of works. When was photography established as an art form? In the early 1900s. Alfred Stieglitz, 1864-1946, is the acknowledged father of modern photography. His interest in the medium began when he was just a toddler, at the age of two. He became obsessed with a photo of his cousin, carrying it with him at all times. When he was nine years old, he took exception to a professional photographer's practice of using pigment to color a black and white photo, complaining that this spoiled the quality of the print. Between 1887 and 1911 Stieglitz worked to establish photography as a valid form of artistic expression, a pursuit for which he was sometimes publicly derided. He believed that photography should be separate from painting, but on an equal footing as an art form. He also strove to differentiate photography by instilling it with an American essence. The streets of New York City became his subject. By the time Stieglitz founded the Photo Secession Group in 1902, he had developed a uniquely American art form. Stieglitz also published and edited photography magazines, most notably Camera Work, 1903-17. After an unhappy first marriage, in 1924, Stieglitz married American artist Georgia O'Keeffe. 1887-1986 who became the subject of one of his best-known series of works. Is there an American Poet Laureate?
Yes, in 1985 the U.S. Congress authorized the naming of a National Poet Laureate. In 1986 Kentucky-born man of letters Robert Penn Warren. 1909-1989, became the country's first Poet Laureate. Among his works are the novels All the King's Men, 1946, Pulitzer Prize, and A Place to Come to. 1977, several volumes of poetry, and essays published in the anthology I'll Take My Stand, 1930. He was also the editor, 1935-42, of the literary journal The Southern Review. Warren's successors have included Joseph Brodsky, Mona Van Dyne, the first woman to receive the honor, and Rita Dove, the first African American to receive the honor. The complete list of poet laureates is available on the Library of Congress's website. HTTP colon slash slash www.loc.gov slash poetry slash laureate.html Why was Voltaire exiled from France? The French writer Voltaire, 1694-1778, born François-Marie Arouet, Voltaire was an assumed name. Was imprisoned twice during his lifetime, he was released the second time on the condition that he leave the country. The prison terms and expulsion were the result of Voltaire's expert satire which first got him into trouble when he was a young man. After finishing a course of study at the Jesuit School College Louis Le Grand, 1704-11, Voltaire joined a group of aristocrats in Paris who valued the young writer's wit. He wrote and circulated verse criticizing the regent, the Duke d'Orleans. As a result of these offensive works, Voltaire was put into the Bastille, in 1717, where he began writing an epic, The Henriad, about France's King Henry IV, 1553-1610, full of indictments of religious fanaticism and praise for toleration. The work proved highly controversial in its day. Such anti-establishment protests eventually led the writer to have an argument with the Chevalier de Rohan, a member of one of France's most powerful families. This conflict resulted in Voltaire's arrest, imprisonment, again in the Bastille, and exile to England in 1726. He stayed in London until 1729. Returning to France, the writer penned his observations on English social and political beliefs. Letters Concerning the English Nation, 1734 Again stirring a controversy his exaltation of English liberalism was viewed by the authorities as a criticism of French conservatism. He fled the trouble by going into seclusion in Lorraine, where he stayed through 1749. The Biting Criticism Of his works won the writer fame as well as controversy, both of which followed him throughout his life. In 1750 he was invited to visit Prussian King Frederick the Great at court, accepting. He stayed there only two years he was forced to leave in 1753 after quarreling with the man he called the Philosopher King. He spent the last 20 years of his life in Switzerland. 
returning to Paris to see a performance of one of his plays, Irene, just before his death. Why is Rembrandt considered the archetype of the modern artist? To understand the similarities between Rembrandt van Rijn (1606–1669) and the modern artist, it's important to note that this master portrait painter, who broke ground in his use of light and shadow, was in his own time criticized for his work. Some thought it too personal or too eccentric. An Italian biographer asserted that Rembrandt's works were concerned with the ugly. And he described the artist as a tasteless painter. Rembrandt's subjects included lower class people, the events of everyday life and everyday business. As well as the humanity and humility of Christ, rather than the choirs, trumpets and celestial triumph that were the subjects of other religious paintings at the time. His portraits reveal his interest in the effects of time on human features including his own. In summary, the Dutch artist approached his work with psychological insight and profound sympathy for the human affliction. He was also known to use the butt end of his brush to apply paint. Thus, he strayed outside the accepted limits of great art at the time. Art critics today recognize Rembrandt as not only one of the great portrait painters, but a master of realism. The Dutch painter, who also etched, drew, and made prints, is regarded as an example for the working artist. He showed that the subject is less important than what the artist does with his materials. Among his most acclaimed works are the Syndics of the Cloth Guild, 1662, and The Return of the Prodigal Son. See 1665. The first painting shows a board of directors going over the books. And Rembrandt astutely captures the moment when the six businessmen are interrupted, thus showing a remarkably real everyday scene. The Return of the Prodigal Son is one of the most moving religious paintings of all time. Here Rembrandt has with great compassion rendered the reunion of father and son. Capturing that moment of mercy when the contrite son kneels before his forgiving father. Through his series of self-portraits, Rembrandt documented his own history from the confidence and optimism of his youth to the worn resignation of his declining years. Who invented the first personal computer? Development of the personal computer, PC, a microcomputer designed to be used by one person, was first developed for business use in the early 1970s. Digital Equipment Corporation developed the PDP-8, which was predominantly used in scientific laboratories. The credit for development of a computer for home use goes to Steve Wozniak, 1950. And Steve Jobs, 1955, college dropouts who founded Apple Computer in 1976. They spent six months working out of a garage developing the crude prototype for Apple I, which was bought by some 600 hobbyists who had to know how to wire, program, 
and set up the machine. Its successor, Apple II, was introduced in 1977 as the first fully assembled programmable microcomputer, but it still required customers to use their televisions as screens and to use audio cassettes for data storage. It retailed for just less than $1. 300 that same year Commodore and Tandy introduced affordable personal computers. In 1984 Apple Computer introduced the Macintosh, Mac which became the first widely used computer with a graphical user interface, GUI. By this time, International Business Machines, IBM, had introduced its PC, 1981, which quickly overtook the Mac. In spite of the fact that IBM was behind in developing a user-friendly graphical interface, When was email invented? Short for electronic mail, email was invented in 1971 by computer engineer Ray Tomlinson, 1941, who developed a communications program for computer users at the Advanced Research Projects Agency, ARPA. The result was ARPANET, a program that allowed text messages to be sent to any other computer on the local network. ARPANET is now hailed as the Model T of the information superhighway. The technology expanded in the 1970s with the use of modems, which connect computers via telephone lines. Within a decade of its introduction, email had become widely used as a communications mode in the workplace. In the 1990s usage expanded rapidly to Internet users at home, schools, and elsewhere. Some technology analysts call email the killer app of the Internet. The most powerful tool on the worldwide computer network. What is a poet laureate? A poet laureate is someone who is recognized by his or her country or state as its most eminent and representative poet. Officially, a poet laureate is appointed or named by the government. England's first, if unofficially titled. Poet laureate was Ben Johnson, 1572-1637, a contemporary of Shakespeare. Shakespeare acted a leading role in the first of Johnson's great plays. Every Man in His Humor, 1598. In 1605 Johnson began writing a series of masks, short. Allegorical dramas that were performed by actors wearing masks, for the court. Years later, in 1616, he was appointed Poet Laureate and in that capacity received a substantial pension. Among Johnson's works are Volpone, 1605, works, a collection of poetry published in 1616, and which includes the oft-quoted line. Drink to me only with thine eyes, and pleasure reconciled to virtue, 1618. Some sources trace the first British Poet Laureate back to Edmund Spencer. 1552 or 1553 to 1599, 
who is called the poet's poet. However, the title of poet laureate was not officially conferred on an English writer until 1638, when poet and dramatist William Davenant, 1606-1668, who was reputed to be the godson or even the illegitimate son of Shakespeare, was given the honor. Other poet laureates of England include John Dryden, 1631-1700, William Wordsworth, 1770-1850, and Lord Alfred Tennyson, 1809-1892. Who was Alexis de Tocqueville? Aristocrat Alexis de Tocqueville, 1805-1859, was only 26 years old when he traveled to New York with his colleague and friend. Gustave de Beaumont, 1802-1866, to study and observe American democracy. Though Tocqueville set out with the pretext of studying the American penal system on behalf of the French government. Both he and Beaumont were magistrates at the time. He had the deliberate and personal goal of conducting an on-site investigation of the world's first and then only completely democratic society, the United States. Tocqueville and Beaumont traveled for nine months through New England, eastern Canada, and numerous American cities, including New York, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Baltimore, Maryland, Washington, D.C., Cincinnati, Ohio, and New Orleans, Louisiana. The pair returned to France in 1832 and the following year published their study on the penitentiary system in the United States and its application in France. Once this official obligation was behind him, Tocqueville left his post as magistrate and moved into a modest Paris apartment. There he devoted two years to writing Democracy in America, 1835-1840. The work was soon proclaimed the classic treatment of its subject throughout the Western world and secured Tocqueville's fame as political observer, philosopher, and, later, sociologist. Tocqueville proclaimed that during his travels, nothing struck me more forcibly than the general equality of conditions. All classes meet continually and no haughtiness at all results from the differences in social position. Everyone shakes hands but he also foresaw the possibility that the principles of economic equality could be undermined by the American passion for equality, which not only tends to elevate the humble to the rank of the great, but also impels the weak to attempt to lower the powerful to their own level. While he warned against the possible tyranny of the majority as a hazard of democracy, he also added that law, religion, and the press provide safeguards against democratic despotism. So much art is called impressionistic today. What exactly is impressionism? The term Impressionism was derived by a rather mean-spirited art critic from the title of one of Claude Monet's 1840-1926, Early Paintings, Impression, Fog, La Havre, 1872. 
the French Impressionist painters were interested in the experience of the natural world and in rendering it exactly as it is seen not fixed and frozen with an absolute perspective but rather as constantly changing and as it is glimpsed by a moving eye. Georges Seurat, 1859-1891, and Paul Signac, 1863-1935, are also typically thought of as Impressionists. However, they are more appropriately dubbed Neo-Impressionists since they along with Camille Pissarro, 1830-1903, advanced the work of the original group through more scientific theories of light and color, introducing deliberate optical effects to their works. Seurat and Signac are commonly referred to as Pointeists for the technique. Pioneered by Seurat, of using small brush strokes to create an intricate mosaic effect. The post-impressionists, artists representing a range of explorations but all having come out of the impressionist movement. Included both Seurat and Signac, as well as Henri de Toulouse-Lautrec. 1864-1901, Paul Gauguin, 1848-1903, Vincent van Gogh, 1853-1890. And Paul Cezanne, 1839 to 1906, who was also associated with the original Impressionists. Together, the Impressionists paved the way for the art of the 20th century. Since, as a group, they asserted the identity of a painting as a thing, a created object in its own right. With its own structure and its own laws beyond and different from the world of man and nature, history of modern art. When was instant messaging introduced? The ability to send instant text messages over computers was introduced to the Public in 1996. Internet service provider America Online, AOL, launched instant messaging. Or IM, as another way for its members to communicate with each other. By logging onto a home or work computer, or cell phone with internet capabilities. Users could view their buddy list and see which of their AOL contacts were online at the time. IM users could then send messages back and forth in real time, next door, or across thousands of miles. In 1997 AOL expanded the service to non-AOL users with a utility called AOL Instant Messaging. AIM and in 1998 the company acquired another IM utility, ICQ. By 1999 MSN and Yahoo rolled out their instant messenger services, and others followed. The concept caught on, particularly with young users who embraced the concept of a private chat room. In 2004 a Pew Internet and American Life Project report estimated that 53 million Americans or 4 out of 10 Internet users, were instant messaging. IM had become the primary form of communication for many, replacing telephone calls and emails. The mode of communication also brought about a new shorthand or subculture language, with a heavy reliance on abbreviations and icons. The use of the technology continued to grow rapidly, expanding to practical business use. In 2004 analysts estimated that there were about 600 million registered IM users worldwide.
When was the first fax machine developed? The fax, facsimile, machine may seem like a recent invention. But it was developed long ago it took more than 100 years for the machines to become part of everyday life. In 1842-1843 Scottish philosopher and psychologist Alexander Bain. 1818-1903, invented the first, albeit crude, fax machine. The scanning technology was improved enough by 1924 that Newspapers began using the device to transmit photographs. By the 1930s wire photos were an important component of newspaper reports. It was not until the 1980s that faxes came into widespread use. As manufacturers produced the more compact and affordable machines that are visible in most every place of business today. When was color television invented? In 1940 Hungarian-American engineer Peter Karl Goldmark, 1906-1977 The head of the Columbia Broadcasting Systems, CBS, Research and Development Laboratory came up with a technology that broke down the television image into three primary colors through a set of spinning filters in front of black and white, causing the video to be viewed in color. His system gave way in the 1950s to an RCA system whose signals were compatible with conventional black and white TV signals. In September 1962 American Broadcasting Corporation, ABC, began color telecasts, for three and a half hours a week. By this time, competitor National Broadcasting Corporation, NBC, was broadcasting 68% of its primetime programming in color. While CBS had opted to confine itself to black and white after having transmitted in color earlier. By 1967 all three networks were broadcasting entirely in color. It was not until 1967 that color television was broadcast in England. On July 1st the BBC2 transmitted seven hours of programming, most of it coverage of lawn tennis from Wimbledon. Did Michelangelo study anatomy? Yes, in 1492 Michelangelo Bonarotti 1475 to 1564, a master sculptor of the human form, undertook the study of anatomy based on the dissection of corpses from the hospital of Santo Spirito. Perhaps most well known for his sculptures of David, 1501-04, and Moses, 1515-15. As well as his frescoes on the ceiling and walls of the Sistine Chapel, Michelangelo was also an architect who believed that buildings should follow the form of the human body to the extent of disposing units symmetrically around a central and unique axis, in a relationship like that of the arms to the body. He also wrote poetry, he was a true Renaissance man.
Michelangelo was totally absorbed in his work and was known to be impatient with himself and with others. He has been likened to German composer Ludwig van Beethoven. 1770 to 1827, since the personal letters of both men reveal a deep sympathy and concern for those close to them. And profound understanding of humanity informs their works, Gardner's art through the ages. Who invented the television? The television, which may seem to many to be a decidedly American invention, was actually the outcome of a series of inventions by a cast of international characters. As early as 1872 British engineer Willoughby Smith, 1828-1891, inspired by an experiment on selenium rods, imagined a system of visual telegraphy. Five years later, the tube technology that would make television possible was developed in Strasbourg by German physicist Karl Ferdinand Braun, 1850-1918. He invented a cathode ray tube, also known as the Braun tube which improved the Marconi wireless, radio, technology by increasing the energy of sending stations and arranged antennas to control the direction of radiation. In 1907 Russian physicist Boris Rosing proposed using bronze tube to receive images something he called electric vision. One year later, Alan Campbell Swinton, 1863-1930 Suggested using the cathode ray tube to both receive and transmit images. That same year, the idea of using cathode ray tubes to scan images for The purpose of television was published, and by 1912 it was being worked on by Rosing and his former pupil. Vladimir Zwerikin, 1889-1982, in Russia. In 1923 a competing technology, which was entirely mechanical, reached an early milestone when British inventor John Logie Baird, 1888-1946, demonstrated an electrified hatbox with discs which constituted the world's first working television set. But the race was still on and in that same year, Zwerikin, who had moved to the United States in 1919 and was hired by Westinghouse Electronic Corporation, in 1920, advanced the tube-based technology when he patented the iconoscope, which would become the television camera. In 1929 Zwerikin, now a U.S. citizen, invented the Kinescope, television tube. Zwerikin's inventions together comprised the first electronic television. Regularly scheduled U.S. television began on April 30, 1939, when President Franklin D. Roosevelt, 1882-1945, opened the New York World's Fair, billed as the World of Tomorrow. Giving a speech that was the first televised presidential talk. The National Broadcasting Company's, NBC, coverage of the fair's opening initiated its weekly television scheduling. A victory for parent company RCA, whose president. David Sarnoff, 1891-1971, founded NBC and is considered a broadcasting pioneer.
What were Voltaire's beliefs? The prolific French writer's corpus of 52 works were produced as part of his lifelong effort to expose injustices. Voltaire's famous words, Acrace à l'infame, squash that which is evil, encapsulate his tenets. He believed in God, but abhorred priestly, high church, traditions. He spread the doctrines of rational skepticism to the world, he strongly advocated religious and political tolerance. And he held great faith in humankind's ability to strive for perfection. To the European literary world He embodied the highest ideal of the Age of Reason, also called the Enlightenment. But victims of his wit feared and denigrated him. Celebrated by some during his lifetime, he has certainly been celebrated since. His masterpiece, Candide, 1759, a satirical tale exploring the nature of good and evil, has been translated into more than 100 languages. When was photography invented? The concept of still photography dates back to the 10th century when Islamic scientists developed the camera obscura. Latin for dark chamber, a darkened enclosure with a small aperture, opening, to admit light. The light rays would cast an inverted image of external objects onto a flat surface opposite the aperture. This image could be studied and traced by someone working inside the camera obscura. Or the image could be viewed from the outside of the camera, through a peephole. In the 16th century, the Italian scientist Giambattista della Porta, c. 1535 to 1615, published his studies on fitting the aperture of the camera. Obscura with a lens to strengthen or enlarge the image projected. Made increasingly versatile through additional improvements. The camera obscura become popular among 17th and 18th century European artists. But the camera obscura could only project, rather than reproduce, images onto a screen or a piece of paper. During the 1800s scientists experimented with ways of making the images permanent. Among those who made advances in the photographic process were French physicist Joseph Nicephorne Yeps. 1765-1833 who produced the first negative image in 1826, French painter Louis Jacques Daguerre. 1759-1851, who in 1839 succeeded in making a direct positive image on a silver plate. Known as the daguerreotype, English scientist William Henry Fox Talbot, 1800-1877, who developed a paper negative, c. 1841, that could be used to print any number of paper positives, and English astronomer Sir John Herschel. 1792 to 1891, who was the first to produce a practical photographic fixing agent and the first to apply the terms positive and negative to photographic images. All of these milestones made photography a practical way of permanently recording real-life images. The breakthrough in still photography was the Kodak. 
introduced in 1888 by American inventor George Eastman, 1854-1932. The Kodak camera used film that was wound on rollers. Eliminating the glass photographic plates that had been in use. The box-shaped camera made photography accessible to everyone including amateurs. By the early 1900s the Eastman Kodak Company had become the largest photographic film and camera producer in the world. George Eastman has been credited with mass-producing the moment, before the Kodak. A word he made up because he was fond of the letter K, photography had largely been the domain of professionals who were commissioned to take portraits of the well-to-do prominent members of society. Once the Kodak became widely available, photographs preserved the faces of ordinary people and the events of everyday life. Who wrote the first computer program? The first functional computer program was written by Grace Murray Hopper, 1906-1992, an admiral of the U.S. Navy. She wrote a program for the Mark I computer. Developed in 1944, the first fully automatic calculator. During the 1950s Hopper directed the work that developed one of the most widely used computer programming languages, COBOL, common business-oriented language. She is also credited with coining the slang term bug to refer to computer program errors. The story goes that her machine had broken down. And when she looked into the problem, she discovered a dead moth in the computer. As she removed it, she reportedly announced that she was debugging the machine. Hopper served the U.S. Navy for 43 years. From 1943 to 1986, and retired as its most senior officer. She was also a professor at Vassar College and a programmer for the Sperry Rand Corporation from 1959 to 1971. She is one of the pioneers of computer science. The very first computer program written, though never used, was also by a woman. The English Baroness Augusta Ada Byron, the poet Lord Byron's daughter, born 1815, wrote it for Charles Babbage's analytical engine, which was never completed, and so the program was not tested. How is Picasso's work characterized? It's impossible to characterize or classify the work of Spaniard Pablo Picasso, 1881-1973. Since his career as an artist spanned his entire life and he experimented with many disciplines. Picasso often claimed that he could draw before he could speak. And by all accounts he spent much of his childhood engaged in drawing. He was only 15 years old when he submitted his first works for exhibition. And by the turn of the century, when he was still a young man, he began exploring the blossoming modern art movement. The rest of his career breaks into several periods. His Blue Period, 
1901-04, was named for the monochromatic use of the color for its subjects. And was likely the result of a despair brought on by the suicide of a friend. Next came his rose period, beginning 1905. When images of harlequins and jesters appear in his works all to a somewhat melancholic effect. He soon began to incorporate aspects of primitive art, and later experimented with geometric line and form in his works. Which were constructions or deconstruct ions sometimes only identifiable by their title. In the spring of 1912 cubism exploded, and Picasso was on its forefront. In 1923 he broke new ground with surrealism. The key masterpiece in his body of works came in 1937 when he painted Guernica. His rendering of the horror of the German attack, supported by Spanish fascists, on the small Basque town, of Guernica, in Spain. His career reached its height during the 1940s, during which he lived in Nazi-occupied Paris. Biographer Pierre Cabane summed up the last period, 1944-73, of Picasso's work. He invented a second classicism. Autobiographical classicism. His final 30 years were to be a dizzying, breakneck race toward creation. During this time, Picasso did not chart any new artistic territory. But simply created art at an amazing rate. After his death in 1973, his estate yielded an inventory of 35,000 remaining works paintings. Drawings, sculptures, ceramics, prints, and woodcuts. He left an enormous even mind-boggling legacy to the art world. In a 1991 article in Vanity Fair, Picasso's friend and biographer John Richardson observed. Almost every artist of any interest who's worked in the last 50 years is indebted to Picasso, whether he's reacting against him knowingly or is unwittingly influenced by him. Picasso sowed the seeds whose fruits we are continuing to reap. Who invented the computer? English mathematician Charles Babbage, 1792-1871, is recognized as the first to conceptualize the computer. He worked to develop a mechanical computing machine called the analytical engine, which is considered the prototype of the digital computer. While attending Cambridge University in 1812, Babbage conceived of the idea of a machine that could calculate data faster than could humans and without human error. These were the early years of the Industrial Revolution. And the world Babbage lived in was growing increasingly complex. Human errors in mathematical tables posed serious problems for many burgeoning industries. After graduating from Cambridge, Babbage returned to the idea of a computational aid. He spent the rest of his life and much of his fortune trying to build such a machine. But he was not to finish. Nevertheless, Babbage's never completed analytical engine, on which he began work in 1834, was the forerunner of the modern digital computer. A programmable electronic device that stores, retrieves, 
and processes data. Babbage's device used punch cards to store data and was intended to print answers. More than 100 years later, the first fully automatic calculator was invented. Development began in 1939 at Harvard University. Under the direction of mathematician Howard Aiken, 1900 to 1973, the first electronic digital computer called Mark I was invented in 1944. The Mark II followed in 1947. In 1946 scientists at the University of Pennsylvania completed ENIAC. Electronic Numerical Integrator and Calculator, the first all-purpose electronic digital computer. Operating on 18,000 vacuum tubes, ENIAC was large. Required great deal of power to run, and generated a lot of heat. The first computer to handle both numeric and alphabetical data with equal facility was the UNIVAC. Universal Automatic Computer, developed between 1946 and 1951, also at the University of Pennsylvania. Who was the first to write a modern novel? while there are differing opinions on the answer to this question. It is generally accepted that the credit for the novel as we know it belongs to Spanish writer Miguel de Cervantes, 1547-1616. Cervantes wrote Don Quixote, in two parts, 1605 and 1615. It was the first extended prose narrative in European literature in which characters and events are depicted in what came to be called the modern realistic tradition. Considered an epic masterpiece, Don Quixote had an undeniable influence on early novelists, including English novelist and playwright Henry Fielding, who wrote the realistic novel Tom Jones, 1749. Don Quixote is also said to have anticipated later fictional masterpieces, including French novelist Gustave Flaubert's Madame Bovary, 1857, Russian novelist Fyodor Dostoevsky's The Idiot, 1868-69. And American writer Mark Twain's The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, 1876, and The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, 1884. Was Shakespeare famous in his own time? Yes, by 1592 he was well known as a dramatist. William Shakespeare 1564-1616, was the son of John Shakespeare, who belonged to the merchant class. And Mary Arden, who came from a family of slightly higher social standing. His first plays, the three parts of the Henry VI history cycle were presented in London in 1590-1592. The first reference to Shakespeare in the London literary world dates from 1592, when dramatist Robert Green, c. 1558-1559, to referred to him as an upstart crow. The critical remark notwithstanding. 
Shakespeare's literary reputation and his acclaim grew over the next few years. He experimented with classical dramatic forms in the early tragedy Titus Andronicus. 1593-1594, and issued a pair of narrative poems, Venus and Adonis, 1593, and The Rape of Lucaris, 1594. These works, which played to the fashion for poems on mythological themes, were immensely successful, establishing honey-tongued Shakespeare as his contemporary Francis Mears. 1565 to 1647, called him as a prominent writer. Shakespeare further established himself as a professional actor and playwright when he joined the Lord Chamberlain's Men, an acting company formed in 1594 when they began performing at theatres in London. In 1603, the group was renamed the King's Men. They became the foremost London company, largely attributable to the fact that after joining the group in 1594, Shakespeare wrote for no other company. What was Goethe's contribution to world literature? Johann Wolfgang Goethe, 1749-1832, is considered Germany's greatest writer. He also was a scientist, artist, musician, and philosopher. As a writer, Goethe experimented with many genres and literary styles. And his works became a shaping force of the major German literary movements of the late 18th and early 19th centuries. His masterwork, the poetic drama Faust, 1808, rewritten 1832, embodies the author's humanistic ideal of a world literature one that transcends the boundaries of nations and historical periods. Indeed, the story of Faust, a German astrologer, magician, and soothsayer, c. 1480 to 1540, remains one of universal interest, and has been treated often in both literature and music. The legendary figure was believed to have sold his soul to the devil in exchange for the opportunity to experience all of life's pleasures. What did Shakespeare study? It is thought that William Shakespeare, 1564-1616, attended the King's New School. The local grammar school in Stratford-upon-Avon, England, where the main course of instruction was in Latin. There, students were taught rhetoric, logic, and ethics. And studied works by classical authors Terence, Plautus, Cicero, Virgil, Plutarch, Horace, and Ovid. It is believed that this was the extent of Shakespeare's education. There is no evidence that he attended a university. When was photography established as an art form? In the early 1900s. Alfred Stieglitz, 1864 to 1946, 
is the acknowledged father of modern photography. His interest in the medium began when he was just a toddler, at the age of two. He became obsessed with a photo of his cousin, carrying it with him at all times. When he was nine years old, he took exception to a professional photographer's practice of using pigment to color a black and white photo, complaining that this spoiled the quality of the print. Between 1887 and 1911 Stieglitz worked to establish photography as a valid form of artistic expression. A pursuit for which he was sometimes publicly derided. He believed that photography should be separate from painting, but on an equal footing as an art form. He also strove to differentiate photography by instilling it with an American essence. The streets of New York City became his subject. By the time Stieglitz founded the Photo Secession Group in 1902, he had developed a uniquely American art form. Stieglitz also published and edited photography magazines, most notably Camera Work, 1903-17. After an unhappy first marriage, in 1924, Stieglitz married American artist Georgia O'Keeffe. 1887-1986 who became the subject of one of his best-known series of works. How old is the World Wide Web? The Web which adds an ease of use layer to the internet by providing a graphical user interface. GUI, was developed in 1990 by English computer scientist Tim Berners-Lee. 1955, who wrote the web software at the CERN Physics Laboratory near Geneva, Switzerland. Berners-Lee wrote a program defining hypertext markup language, HTML Hypertext Transfer Protocol, HTTP, and Universal Resource Locators, URLs The web became part of the Internet in 1991 and has played a major role in the growing popularity of the International Computer Network, making information more accessible to the user via multimedia interfaces which allow the presentation of graphics, formatted text and hyperlinks, photos, and illustrations, as well as streaming or downloadable audio and video. How did American Mary Cassatt join the Paris art world of the Impressionists? Mary Cassatt, 1844-1926, the daughter of a wealthy investment banker from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, traveled to Paris in 1866 in the company of her mother and some women friends. The young Cassatt was determined to join the city's community of artists. Since women were not allowed to enroll in classes at Paris's Institute of Beaux Arts, the policy was changed in 1897. Cassatt privately studied painting and traveled in Europe, pursuing her artistic interests. Returning to Paris in 1874, she became acquainted with Edgar Degas, 1834 to 1917 who remarked that the American artist possessed an infinite talent and that she was a person who feels as I do. 
he made these observations after viewing one of her paintings at the Salon d'Automne in Paris. Cassatt went on to exhibit with the Impressionists in 1879, 1880, 1881, and 1886, gaining her first solo exhibit in 1891. Judith Barter Curator of American Arts at the Art Institute of Chicago and organizer of The Traveling Exhibit Mary Cassatt, Modern Woman, describes Cassatt as a very good businesswoman, who knew how to market her career. During three and a half years of research, which she conducted to launch the exhibit, Barter explored the prevailing social climate of the day, the late 19th century was a time when feminists who organized to campaign for political and social reforms, eventually winning women the vote in 1920. Focused on maternity, encouraging women to be involved in caring for their children. To Cassatt, observed Barter, maternity was the highest expression of womanhood. Women and children were the subjects of Cassatt's body of works, which includes oil paintings, pastels, prints, and etchings. Cassatt's place among the Impressionists has often been overshadowed by her male colleagues, and her contributions to the art world are mentioned only in passing in many art books. But her talent, insights, and sheer determination combine to create an impressive legacy. As Gauguin quipped, Mary Cassatt has charm but she also has force. Which came first the word Scrooge or Dickens's character Scrooge? The character Ebenezer Scrooge came first. Brought to life in Charles Dickens's extremely popular story A Christmas Carol. Published in 1843. By 1899 the term Scrooge, meaning a miserly person, had entered into usage. Dickens, 1812-1870, created many memorable characters. Oliver Twist, Tiny Tim, and Little Nell, to name a few. Among the English writer's most notable works are Oliver Twist, 1837-39, The Old Curiosity Shop. 1840-41, Bleak House, 1852-53, A Tale of Two Cities, 1859, and Great Expectations, 1860-61. Dickens was popular during his own time and is still popular today attributable not only to the vivid characters he created, but for his expression of social concerns. Though he grew more pessimistic in his later works, Dickens continued to demonstrate his profound sympathy for the oppressed and his belief in the dignity of man. Was Monet the father of French Impressionism? Though the movement was named for one of Claude Monet's, 1840-1926, paintings and his water lilies. 1905, are arguably the most well-known and highly acclaimed Impressionist works. Impressionism is actually rooted in the works of the group's spiritual leader, Edouard Manet, 1832-1883. to 
who first began experimenting with color and light to bring a more naturalistic quality to painting. In 1863 Manet exhibited two highly controversial and groundbreaking works. Déjeuner sur Elherbe and Olympia Both paintings were based on classic subjects. But Manet rendered these pastoral scenes according to his own experience, giving them a decidedly more earthy and blatantly erotic quality than the Parisian critics and academicians of the day could accept. He was roundly criticized for his scandalous exhibition. Nevertheless, Manet persevered, and in 1868, with his portrait of the French writer Emile Zola, he again challenged the art world and its values. A critic for L.E. National denounced the portrait and cited Among his complaints that Zola's trousers were not made of cloth. This, the artists observed, was both truth and revelation, the pants were made of paint. A few years later, in 1870, Manet began experimenting with painting outside. In the brilliance of natural sunlight. Manet pioneered many of the ideas and techniques taken up by the Impressionists. When was the computer chip developed? The computer chip, or integrated circuit, was developed in the late 1950s by two researchers who were working independently of each other, Jack Kilby, 1923, of Texas Instruments, who developed his chip in 1958, and by Robert Noyce, 1927-1990, of Fairchild Semiconductor, in 1959. The chip is an electronic device made of a very small piece. Usually less than one quarter inch square, of silicon wafer, and today has typically hundreds of thousands miniature transistors and other circuit components that are interconnected. Since its development in the late 1950s, the number of tiny components a chip can have has steadily risen. Improving computer performance, since the chips perform a computer's control, logic, and memory functions. A computer's microprocessor is a single chip that holds all of the computer's logic and arithmetic. It is responsible for interpreting and executing instructions given by a computer program, software. The microprocessor can be thought of as the brain of the computer's operating system. Many other consumer electronic devices rely on the computer chip as well. Including the microwave, the VCR, and calculators. Why is Titian thought of as the father of modern painting? During Titian's time, 1488 or 1490 to 1576, artists began painting on canvas rather than on wood panels. A master of color, the Venetian painter was both popular and prolific. His work was so sought after that even with the help of numerous assistants, he could not keep up with demand. His body of works established oil color on canvas as the typical medium of Western pictorial tradition. Among his most well-known paintings are Sacred and Profane Love, 
c. 1515, and Venus of Urbino, 1538. Why is Milton important to English literature? Except for Shakespeare, the works of John Milton, 1608 to 1674, have been the subject of more commentary than those of any other English writer. Milton is considered one of only a few writers to take their place in the small circle of great epic writers. According to Norton Anthology of English Literature, in Milton's writings two tremendous intellectual and social movements come to a head. The movements referred to are the Renaissance and the Reformation. Scholars point to Milton's use of classical references and the rich tapestry of his works as being Renaissance in nature. While his earnest and individually minded Christianity are resonant of the Reformation. For example, in his masterpiece Paradise Lost, 1667, Milton, like poets Homer and Virgil before him, takes on humankind's entire experience, war, love, religion, hell, heaven, and the cosmos. But rather than having Adam triumph over evil through an act of heroism, he accepts the burden of worldly existence, and triumphs over his guilt by admitting it and repenting it. In addition to his famous epics, Milton wrote sonnets and other short poems including on Shakespeare, El Allegro, I. L. Penseroso, and Lycidas. His writings also include political discourse, chief of which is the essay Areopagitica, 1644. Among the ideas that Milton championed were the limitation of the monarchy, dethroning of bishops, freedom of speech, and the institution of divorce. One commentator mused that the guarantees of freedom in the United States Constitution owe more to Milton's Areopagitica than to John Locke. How did the word Machiavellian get its meaning? Machiavellian is defined as characterized by cunning, duplicity, or bad faith. It's based on the theory of Italian diplomat Niccolo Machiavelli, 1469-1527, who developed a code of political conduct that operates independent of ethics, thus disregarding moral authorities such as classical philosophy and Christian theology. In 1513, after having been exiled from Florence, Italy, by the powerful Medici family, Machiavelli abruptly turned his attention to writing The Prince, which puts forth a calm and uncompromising analysis of techniques and methods that the successful ruler must use in order to gain and keep power. Written in the form of advice to the ruler, Machiavelli advises the prince that only one consideration should govern his decisions. The effectiveness of a particular course of action, regardless of its ethical character. The book had little immediate impact in Italy, although it soon became legendary throughout Europe. And its major ideas the power of politics are familiar today even to people who have never read the book.
Why were Matisse's paintings considered so shocking when they were debuted? Even if they seem commonplace to art today, the color and style of the paintings. A French expressionist Henri Matisse, 1869-1954, were revolutionary in their day. In 1905 Matisse, along with several other artists, exhibited works at Paris's Salon d'Automne. The wildly colorful paintings on display there are said to have prompted an art critic to exclaim that they were fauve, or wild beasts. The name stuck, Matisse and his contemporaries who were using Brilliant colors in an arbitrary fashion became known as the Fauve. His famous work Madame Matisse, or Green Stripe, 1905, showed his wife with blue hair and a green stripe. Running down the middle of her face, which was colored pink on one side of her nose and yellow on the other. Matisse was at the forefront of a movement that was building new artistic values. The Fauve were not using color in a scientific manner, as George Isara had done. Nor were they using it in the nondescriptive manner of Paul Gauguin, 1848-1903, and Vincent van Gogh, 1853-1890. The Fauve were developing the concept of abstraction. Throughout his career, Matisse continued to experiment with various art forms painting, paper cutouts, and sculptures. All of his works indicate a progressive elimination of detail and simplification of line and color. So influential was his style on modern art that some 70 years later one art critic commented that it was as if Matisse belonged to a later generation and a different world. Why was the Internet invented? The computer network was invented in the late 1960s so that you S. Department of Defense researchers could share information with each other and with other researchers. The Advanced Research Projects Agency, ARPA, developed the Internet, its users, who were mostly scientists and academics, saw the power of the new technology, wires linking computer terminals in a Web of networks allow people anywhere in the world to communicate with each other over the computer. Even though it was developed by the government, the Internet is not government run. The Internet Society, comprised of volunteers, addresses usage and standards issues. The technology caught on, made more accessible by the innovation of the user friendly World Wide Web. In spring 2005 there were an estimated 888 million internet users around the world. About 35% of them in Asia, 30% in Europe, and 25% in North America, about 200 million of those in the United States. The powerful network had become part of everyday life in the developed world. When did mobile phones first come into use? Mobile communication dates back to radio phones used in the 1940s and 1950s. 
They were two-way radio systems that were powered by car batteries and required operator assistance. They were not very reliable, and the phones were anchored to a place, not a person. The first truly mobile phone call, in that it used a portable handset, was manufactured on April 3, 1973. The caller was Dr. Martin Cooper of Motorola, who, from the streets of Manhattan, called rival researcher Joel Engel at Bell Laboratories. At NT's research arm, the two companies were in a heated race to develop mobile telephony. The device used by Cooper that day was called the Dynatac. It weighed two pounds and had simple dial, talk, and listen features. The first generation of mobile phones began to be widely used in the 1980s. These phones were large by today's standards and were usually installed in a car or briefcase. Transmission was via clusters of base stations, or cellular networks. The next generation of mobile phones appeared in the 1990s. The handset and battery technology improved, allowing for more features in smaller sized phones and greater mobility. These were reliable phones that people could carry with them. As more users adopted the technology, cellular providers expanded transmitting systems. In some areas of the world, Usage took off to the point of near universality by 2000. Usage in the United States. Though strong, lagged behind the rest of the developed world. Some analysts believed that this was due to relatively high service fees. While others cited a lack of reliability, especially in rural areas. The land-based telephone system in the United States was designed to nine nines of reliability. Meaning it can be counted on to function 99.9999999% of the time. A standard as yet unmet by cellular technology.